Welcome back to Yahoo Finance. Time for Crypto Corner. We don't need to remind our viewers about the big dip in Bitcoin this weekend. Take a look at that. It was about 57,000 headed into the weekend. Here we are, about 48,000. So a lot of questions about why that happens. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's David Hollard, who's been watching all the market action. I'm sure a very busy weekend for you. David, uh, I guess first question, why did that happen? And then secondly, did anyone buy that dip? I heard that El Salvador might have some people uh, trying to get the price back up. Yeah, Brian, as you mentioned, it, it was a very busy weekend for me. Some people consider it sort of a bloodbath for the cryptocurrency markets. Um, yeah, so uh, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, we had a very significant drop and sort of what you're seeing similar in stocks. This was sort of, uh, uh, you know, sort of, uh, I guess, concerns on, over uncertainty with the Federal Reserve tightening monetary policy. In addition to the new COVID variant, watching that. Um, but obviously what sort of created such an exaggerated move was the the uh, drop uh, sort of driven by leverage from, uh, I guess, what you would call uh expectations for uh, Bitcoin hitting 100K by the year's end being dashed and sort of what's looking like, you know, a less certain, less bullish market. So um, I, I think uh, the main concern, uh, Bitcoin's sort of retaken some of those gains, but, you know, you always have cryptocurrency investors like the diehards sort of buying the dip every time it gets lower because they're sure it's going to come back. Um, so uh, the president of El Salvador, uh, actually purchased 150 Bitcoins on uh, Saturday. And so right now, as of today, uh, Bitcoin is down 2%. So he's still in the red. Um, it was about uh, $7 million uh, dollars, um, on Saturday. Now it's looking to be a little bit lower uh, by about $100,000. So we'll continue to watch that. But like the rest of the markets, it's sort of uh, been, been an uneasy start to the week. Yeah, most definitely. Um, and we'll see how that trade turns out. I, I also want to ask you about, I know there's another story you've written, but I, as a follow up on the action in Bitcoin, there was an interesting chart that Bloomberg brought up that looked at the correlation between Bitcoin and stocks. And it's actually been positive pretty much since the beginning of the pandemic. Not a one to one correlation, but meaning directionally they go in the same direction more often than not. Um, and Which is interesting to me, right? Because one of the sort of um, defenses of Bitcoin or arguments for Bitcoin or and other crypto was that it, it wasn't really correlated with anything else. But it does seem like, and, and the weekend sort of illustrates this, that when stocks are risk off, Bitcoin's risk off too. So, you know, it just, I don't know. I mean, in as much as we know what drives Bitcoin any of the time, what are you hearing from people on this front? Yeah, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are a lot of times what the investors make of it. And, you know, we've seen in the last year, uh, Bitcoin has become an asset that's, you know, majority held by institutions. And so if institutions are going to be looking at it as a risk asset, and the main concern is sort of the macro conditions that are going, forming in the market across the globe, then we're going to see it behave like a risk on asset. And that's exactly what happened this weekend. So. I mean, I think the only other thing to add is just that um, derivatives play such a, a large role in the market, too. Uh, you'll see these exaggerated moves from time to time when larger institutions are sort of, uh, you know, risking off. Exaggerated moves from time to time. I feel like that's kind of an evergreen way to describe the dynamics in the cryptocurrency markets. But Yahoo Finance's David Hollerith, thanks so much for breaking all that down for us.